الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وشفيعنا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في سورة البقرة بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الدين يسر ولن يشاد الدين أحد إلا غلبه فسددوا وقاربوا وأبشروا واستعينوا بالغدوة والروحة وشيء من الدلجة the Prophet Allah says in the hadith that I have just quoted that indeed religion is easy and no one tries to wrestle with religion except that religion will dominate him. Therefore, remain straight and become close and receive the glad tidings and seek assistance in the morning, in the evening, and in part of the night. Dear respected listeners, yesterday we started discussing the subject of Yusr al-Din, of ease in religion, and why it is important, especially in this day and age where people are moving away from the deen, that we, in our thought and in our practice, understand and appreciate the importance of this subject. And part and parcel of that, I quoted this hadith and started to discuss the commentary of this hadith as mentioned by Mufti Taqi Uthmani, Hafizahullah. Mufti Taqi Uthmani mentions under the hadith in the Deen Yusri, indeed religion is easy and that no one tries to wrestle and overcome religion except that religion overpowers him. In the commentary of that, Mufti Taqi mentions that if we do not adopt Yusri and ease in religion, then inadvertently what we are doing is adopting Gulu fi Deen. Adopting excessiveness, going overboard, and going too far in our practice of religion. And in explaining that, Mufti Taqi Sahib says that there are six kinds or six, six types of, or six ways in which we can go overboard or be excessive or adopt ghulu in religion. Mufti Taqi sahab farmate hai ke ghulu fi deen ki chhe mukhtalif surate hai. There's six different types. Chhe mukhtalif surate hai, tarike hai. Jiske zariye se hum deen mein kuch aage hi bad jate hai. Had se aage hi bad jate hai deen mein. Ghulu karte hai deen mein. Aur un chhe surato mein do ka taskira humne guzishta kal kiya tha. Aur jin do ka taskira humne guzishta kal kiya tha unme se pehli jo qism hai wo nafal ibadat mein kuch aage hi bad jana nafil ibadat mein ghulu karna what we mentioned yesterday were two of the six types of ways in which we can be excessive in religion and the first of which we mentioned was to be excessive in 
nawafil, to be excessive in optional ibadat. Dusri jo kisam humne bayan ki thi guzishta kal, wo ye thi ke azimat par har waqt amal karna, ruksat ko kabhi nahi apnana. Yani jaha pe gunjaish ho, chhut ho, us chhut aur gunjaish ko kabhi nahi lena. بلکہ ہر وقت یہ کوشش کرنا کہ جو اعلیٰ طریقہ ہے اسی پر عمل کیا جائے تو مفتی تقی صاحب فرماتے ہیں یہ بھی حلو کی ایک قسم ہے یہ بھی ایک حلو کی قسم ہے کہ ہر وقت عظیمت پر عمل کیا جائے اور رخصت پر کبھی نہ عمل کیا جائے The second type we mentioned yesterday was that to always act upon the عظیمہ to always act upon the more resolute position to always act upon the position which is more difficult and harder to do and to never adopt the rukhsa, the lesser position or the position which is easier or the dispensation. So these were the two types from the six that Mufti Taqi Sahib mentions of Gulu Fiddin. And inshallah what we intend to do in the remaining half an hour is to discuss the remaining four types. The third type of Gulu Fiddin is that in doing taqwa and shubuhat, in trying to adopt taqwa, in trying to be conscious of Allah Azza wa Jal, and in doing so, trying to stay away from areas which are of legitimate doubt, what we end up doing is not just stopping there and staying away from where there is legitimate suspicion and doubt, but rather also staying away from things which are as a result of wahm or as a result of waswasa, as a result of um, one's imaginary um, thought. So things that come to mind yet should not require our concern, we also try and stay away from such things. مفتی تقی صاحب فرماتے ہیں کہ غلو کی تیسری قسم یہ ہے کہ تقوی یعنی شبہات میں یعنی شبہا سے بچنے میں شک سے بچنے میں اس حد تک انسان عمل کر بیٹھے کہ وہم جہاں ہو جہاں پر وسوسہ ہو اس سے بھی بچنے کی کوشش کرے کہ تقوی یعنی شبہات تو اپنے درجے پر ٹھیک ہے مگر تقوی یعنی شبہات سے بھی آگے بڑھ جانا اور وہم اور وسوسے کی وجہ سے کسی چیز سے بچنا تو یہ بھی غلو کی ایک قسم ہے then مفتی صاحب mentions in explaining the difference between شبہ and وہم that شبہ and legitimate doubt is where both sides are equal where both sides are equal that the doubt is equal to um to the possible to the alternative possibility so where both sides are equal then that's a legitimate shubha that is a legitimate doubt contrary to that what waham and waswasa is about that there is no real legitimate doubt rather it's just a passing thought it's just a passing thought and predominantly ghalibe ghuman to yahi hai predominantly one thinks that one is okay but even then one pursues the waswasa, one pursues the waham, one pursues the um, negligible doubt. And in explaining that, Mufti Taqi Sahib gives the example um, from one of the Agabir, Maulana Rashid Ahmad Gangohi Rahmatullahi Alayhi. Maulana Rashid Ahmad Gangohi Rahmatullahi Alayhi completed his wudu on one occasion. And after completing his wudu, he had a doubt. And that doubt was that he had not washed his elbow properly. He had not washed his elbow properly. So then he went and washed his elbow again. Once he went and washed his elbow, he came back and he thought, what about my other elbow? Have I washed that properly? So then again he went and he washed the other elbow and then he came back and he had another doubt and this time around 
um, his doubt was, have I washed my ankle properly? So then he said, ha, achha, ab hazrat samaj mein a gai baat, ke ye hazrat ki wajah se ho raha hai. Ye hazrat meaning shaitan ki wajah se ho raha hai. Aaj toh mein bila wudu hi namaz pad lunga. Today, I will perform my salah without wudu. Meaning that I won't entertain this doubt any longer as I've realized that it's just a waswasa. It's just an insinuation from shaitan and therefore does not require my concern. Therefore, I'm going to ignore that waswasa and waham and I'm going to continue with my salah. So through this uh, example or anecdote, Mufti Taqi Sahib explains that there's a difference between shubha, a legitimate doubt which, which one can be concerned about, and a doubt which is negligible or is from the whispers of shaitan, is a waswasa. And both need to be understood and differentiated because if we, in trying to stay away from legitimate doubt or shubha, if we end up trying to pursue waham and waswasa, negligible doubt, then what we end up doing is ghulu fiddin. What we end up doing is being excessive in our practice of faith. So that was the third example that Mufti Taqi Sahib mentions in relation to ghulu fiddin. The fourth kind of ghulu fiddin that Mufti Taqi Sahib mentions is that jaha par tahqiq ke hum mukallaf na ho. Jaha par shariat ne hume tahqiq ka mukallaf na banaya ho. Waha pe tahqiq karna. That where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not obligated us to research and to pursue something, we pursue it. To inquire about something where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not made it obligatory upon us to inquire. So wo bhi ek gulu fiddin ki kisam hai. That is also an example of being excessive in our practice of religion. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us mukallaf to inquire and question certain things. And in that, we should question, we should inquire. But then there are certain matters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not made it obligatory upon us to question or to inquire or to do tahqiq regarding. So in such matters, we should not do tahqiq. And if we do end up doing tahqiq, and if we do end up researching such matters, and inquiring regarding such matters, then what we are guilty of is ghulu fiddin. What we are guilty of is being excessive in our practice of religion, going overboard in our practice of religion. And here, the example which we can all probably relate to is the example of halal meat. So Mufti Taqi Sahib gives the example of halal meat. So you go to someone's house. So yesterday, I, um, I was given da'wah by our Imam Sahib, Mawlana Talha. And there, um, he also, th th there was meat on the Dastar Khan. Um, on the table spread, there was, there was meat. So if, on, if yesterday, I was to ask Imam Sahib that where's this meat from, is that inquiry necessary or unnecessary? Unnecessary. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not made the obligatory upon me to inquire upon that. Rather, I should trust my brother. I should trust the Imam Sahib and take it for granted that is halal. Now, if I don't take it for granted that is halal and I inquire about it, then that would be an example of doing ghulu fiddin. That would be an example of being excessive in my practice of religion, going overboard in my practice of religion. So that's the fourth example that Mufti Taqi gives, that to do tahqiq in matters where it is not necessary to do tahqiq. That is also an example of ghulu fiddin. The fifth kind of ghulu fiddin that Mufti Taqi Sahib mentions is in relation to matters which are mujtahad fi. Matters which are mujtahad fi. And in relation to such matters which are mujtahad fi, we do nakir. Mufti Taqi sahab farmate hai ke mujtahad fi masail mein nakir karna ye bhi ghulu hai. Mujtahad fi masail mein nakir karna 
کسی کو انکار کرنا کسی کو روکنا یہ بھی غلو ہے مجتعد فی مسائل کون سے ہیں مجتعد فی مسائل وہ ہے جن میں علماء کا فقہ کا امہ کا اختلاف ہو جہاں پہ امہ کا علماء کا فقہ کا اختلاف ہو ان مسائل میں کسی ایک جانب کو روکنا ٹوکنا یا نقیر کرنا یہ بھی غلوف الدین ہے جیسے کہ حنفی شافی اختلاف ہے تو اگر کوئی ہم جیسا حنفی آ جائے اور شافی کو روکنے لگے بھئی تو ایسی نماز نہ پڑھ تو یہ بھی غلوف الدین کا ایک مثال ہوگی غلوف الدین کی ایک مثال ہوگی the fifth example or the fifth type of غلوف الدین that مفتی تقیصہ mentions is to stop people in matters which are مجتعد فی in matters where there is a legitimate difference of opinion among the ulama and the fuqaha and the imams where there is a legitimate difference of opinion among the imams, among the jurists and among the scholars to forbid someone from practicing according to one of the opinions is also an example of ghuluf al-deen so the classic example of that is if a shafi'i was to walk into this masjid and we were to stop him from performing salah in the way a shafi'i does then that would be an example of ghuluf al-deen on our part that would be an example of us being excessive in our practice of religion or in trying to enforce our religion upon others that would be an example of that other examples, there's countless examples of this there's countless um, examples of this to give you another example which we can relate to better we all know the controversy around moon sighting for example so there's a legitimate difference of opinion um, some people follow a, a sighting from one particular country another people, they follow a sighting from another country that's a legitimate difference of opinion among the ulama now if we start discussing that and trying to condemn the other side then that is also ghuluf al-deen on our part that is also an example of being excessive in our faith just like we have here chan ka masla hai to chan ke masla mein ikhtilaf hai aur ikhtilaf ulama ke darmiyan hai to hum agar dusri janib ko تردید کرنے لگے ان کے خلاف بولنے لگے تو یہ بھی غلوف الدین کی ایک قسم ہے that is also us being excessive in religion تو ہمیں کیا کرنا چاہیے ہم جس پر چل رہے ہو جس مسجد کے مطابق چل رہے ہو ہم چلتے رہے اور دوسرے کو بھی نہ توکے تو یہ ہمارا طریقہ ہونا چاہیے اگر ہم کسی کے خلاف بولنا شروع کر دے تو یہ بھی غلو کی ایک قسم ہوگی یہ بھی ایک غلو کی قسم ہوگی so what we should be doing is following the sighting or the masjid that we follow in relation to the moon and we should not speak out against the other side that's what we should be doing because there's a legitimate difference of opinion among the ulama about moon sighting similarly um, in relation to fajr we have this mas'ala in ramadan 18 degrees some people practice 18 degrees and generally the masajid will find won't adopt the 18 degree timetable so now if some ulama and some masajid and some places have a different jama'ah for fajr according to 18 degrees then that is a legitimate difference of opinion that is a legitimate difference of opinion that is a valid difference of opinion therefore we should not speak out against such people we should not speak out against the other side so people who follow generally the timetable in the masjid what, what we generally find in the masjid um, we should not speak out against them neither should we speak out against the other side that follow the 18 degrees timetable because this is a legitimate difference of opinion among the ulama and if we do speak out against the other side then that would be hulu on our part why? because we are doing nakir we are speaking out and condemning a matter which is mujtahat fi a matter where there is a legitimate difference of opinion among the ulama so that would be excessiveness or hulu on our part in relation to that so that's the fifth example that mufti taqi sahab mentions that mujtahat fi masail mein nakir karna 
یہ بھی ہولو کی ایک قسم ہے ان اندر دا پلیس مفتی تقی صاحب مینشنز فرام ہیز فرام ہیز فادر مفتی شفیع صاحب رحمۃ اللہ علیہ اینڈ سم آف از ہیو ہرڈ دس ڈائریکٹلی فرام مفتی تقی صاحب از ویل وین ہی وزٹڈ بلاک بن مفتی تقی صاحب سیڈ کوٹنگ ہیز فادر دا مجتحد فی مسائل میں نقیر کرنا خود ایک منکر ہے مجتحد فی مسائل میں نقیر کرنا خود ایک منکر ہے دا ان ماتھرز ویڈ ایز اے لیجیٹم ڈفرینس آف اپینین امنگ علما ٹو کنڈیم ون سائڈ اور دی ادر از ان این آف اٹ سیلف اے منکر از ان این آف اٹ سیلف اے رونگ وچ از وچ ریکوائرز کنڈیمنگ وچ ریکوائرز کنڈیمنگ دیر فور وی should try and avoid condemning people when they are following a legitimate opinion of the ulama. We may not practice that opinion ourselves, but if they are practicing a legitimate opinion of the ulama, we should not speak out against them. We should continue doing what we do and not concern ourselves with someone who is following other ulama. So that's the fifth example. That mujtahad fi masail mein nakir karna ye bhi ghulu ki ek qisam hai. do nakir and to speak out against um, people who follow a legitimate opinion a legitimate opinion among the ulama is also um, an example of ghulu fi deen and the last cut the last category or the last type of ghulu fi deen that mufti taqi sahab mentions is in relation to nahi and in munkar is also in relation to um forbidding evil is also in relation to forbidding wrong and forbidding evil and what mufti taqi sahib says is that when it comes to forbidding evil or forbidding wrong then there's different types of wrong there's tafawut there's a farq there, there's a difference between the different types of wrong and therefore when condemning something we should only condemn it or we should only speak out against it to the level that is due to the level that is required not beyond that therefore what we should appreciate is the different kinds uh, and, and the different types of wrong because not all wrongs are to be treated equally or the same ye jo chhatti qisam hai ghulu fi din ki mufti taqi sahab farmate hain ke nahi anil munkar mein اس بات کا لحاظ رکھنا کہ جس چیز کی ہم نقیر کر رہے ہیں اسی حد تک انکار کیا جائے اور نقیر کی جائے جس حد تک جائز ہو اس کے آگے نہ بڑھے جس حد تک نقیر جائز ہو اسی حد تک انکار کیا جائے روکا جائے ٹوکا جائے اس کے حد سے آگے نہ بڑھے جیسے کہ کوئی چیز حرام ہو تو حرام پر جس طریقے سے ہم نقیر کرتے ہیں وہ الگ ہے مکرو سے مکرو سے جس طریقے سے روکا جاتا ہے وہ الگ ہے حرام سے تو اس کا لحاظ اس درجے کا لحاظ اور تفاوت کا لحاظ رکھا جائے اور اگر ہم لحاظ نہ رکھے تو یہ بھی غلو فی دین کی ایک قسم ہے دا سکس کائنڈ آف غلو فی دین از دا وین وی آر کنڈیمنگ سم تھنگ وی کنڈیم ٹو دا لیول دا از ڈیو وی ڈونٹ گو بیونڈ دا So if something is haram, then that is to be treated differently and that is to be condemned in a manner which is different to something which is makruh, for example, something which is disliked or undesirable. Both have to be treated differently. Both have to be treated differently. And if we fail to treat the two differently, then we will be guilty of doing ghulu fi deen. We will be guilty of being excessive in religion. Now here, we've heard the hadith many a time of Muslim, where the Prophet ﷺ says, مَنْ رَآ مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ بِيَدِهِ فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَتِعْ فَبِلِسَانِهِ فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَتِعْ فَبِقَلْبِهِ وَذَلِكَ أَدْعَفُ الْإِيمَانِ That whoever sees a wrong, then let him stop it with his hand. Then let him stop it with his hand. And if he is not able to do so, then let him change it with his tongue. So the first darajah, is that let him change it with his hand. The second is that if he is not able to do so, then let him change it with his tongue. And if he is not even able to do that, 
then let him condemn it in his heart وَذَلِكَ أَضْعَفُ iman, And that is the lowest form of iman, the weakest form of iman Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ne farmaya ke jo kai aap mein se munkar ko dekhe, buri cheez ko dekhe to us buri cheez ko apne haath se badal de aur agar apne haath se na badal sake to apni zuban se badle aur agar apne zuban se na badal sake to apne dil mein usko bura maan le aur yahi hai kamzor se kamzor darja iman ka to ye hadith to hum sab ne suni hai we have we have all had this hadith however this is one of the hadith which which i consider to be mazloom this is a hadith which I consider to be Muslim wronged that it has been misunderstood so badly that it's as though we have not understood what the Prophet ﷺ has said Why do I say that? Because the ulama have explained this hadith adequately in the commentary of this hadith So for example, Mullah Ali Qari in Mirqat has explained this hadith Similarly, Mawlana Shaf Ali Tani Rahmatullahi Ali has explained this hadith and other ulama have explained this hadith as well and what they have said is that the first level where one should stop a munkar with one's hand that is only applicable to those who have sultan to those who have political power so if one is in, a, in, in, in office or has political power or has sultan then and only then is one allowed to change something or to stop something with their hand so if one has political power then and only then are you allowed to stop something with your hand otherwise for us we do not have the right to stop something with our hand we're not allowed to stop anything physically we're not allowed to do that because that requires political power and political intervention which we the average people do not have so the commentators of this hadith say that the first level is not applicable to us it's applicable to those who have political power the second level that if you aren't able to stop people with one's hand then stop them with your tongue the ulama say that in order to stop someone with their tongue one requires ilm one requires knowledge and the average person does not have knowledge of the adab and the shara'it the etiquettes and the conditions of nahi and in munkar of forbidding evil the average person does not have that knowledge therefore to stop with one's tongue is the job of ulama is the job of the ulama those who have knowledge of nahi and in munkar its shara'it its conditions and it and its etiquettes they are the only people that have a right to stop with their tongue the average person does not even have a right to do that so the ulama say that it's only the ulama who have a right to stop with their tongue so when it comes to stopping with one's hand then that's the job of those who have political power and if it comes to stopping with one's tongue or speaking out against something condemning something then that is the job of the ulama because the ulama will appreciate these nuances these subtleties around where one should speak when one should not speak and the average person will not appreciate that and as a result of that what will happen is that they will speak out against something in such a manner or in such a way or at such a time that it will create more harm that it will create more harm and therefore we create further problems um, for the ummah by speaking out against things where we should not be speaking out so explaining this Mufti Taqi Sahib says that this includes taking into consideration the awlawiyat taking into consideration the priorities that we have to understand certain priorities and then he mentioned an uh, incident um, that he experienced and in that incident there was fundraising taking place for uh, a place where there was conflict so when there's conflict so for example there's um, conflict in Syria may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring about a solution for the people of Syria um, when it comes to conflicts like that um, 
what we find is people make certain comments which are quite judgmental. And this is what Mufti Taqi Saab um, also experienced, that there was fundraising taking place for a particular conflict, for, for a particular place which was affected by conflict. And in relation to such people, someone turned around and said that these people aren't mutashari, they're not following Sharia because they don't have proper beards. They don't have proper beards. And therefore, um, these people, um, he was dismissive of this fundraising that was taking place because the people that lived in this place that was affected by conflict didn't happen to have beards or according to him he did not see them having beards therefore he was dismissive of this cause of fundraising so Mufti Taqi Saab goes what can we say about this that we reduce the deen to the beard the whole of the sharia is being reduced to the beard and not only that other aspects of the deen are completely being neglected and we raising this issue at a time which requires our attention, our focus and our resources and rather than directing our resources towards such people who are oppressed, what we are doing is actually speaking out against the oppressed or thinking bad about the oppressed. So Mufti Taqi Sahib goes, this is a misunderstanding of awlawiyyat, this is a misunderstanding of priorities. That if we understood our priorities, we wouldn't speak about the beard at this juncture. Rather, what we would do is to fundraise for people and to try and create ease for such people. And through that charity, also gain closeness to Allah Azza wa ourselves. That's what we would be prioritizing. We would not be judgmental towards such people. But because we have not understood the deen properly, we become judgmental towards people. So Mufti Taqi Sahib says that we become... We, the lack of appreciation of awlawiyyat is also an example of ghulufiddin, is also an example of being excessive in religion. It's also an example of being excessive in religion. So these are the six types or the six ways in which we can be excessive in religion. So the first way we can be excessive in religion is to go overboard with nawafil, with optional prayers. The second kind is to always pra practice the azima, the more resolute position, the more difficult position, and to never act upon the ruksa, the easier position or the dispensation. The third kind is to always uh, uh, is to go overboard in taqwa. That not only does one try and stay away from shubha, um, things which are doubtful or where there's legitimate doubt, but one also starts to pursue um, waswasa and the whispers of shaitan or things which are negligible in terms of doubt the fourth is that to do tahqiq about matters which we are not mukallaf of to do tahqiq to research such matters to inquire about such matters which we are not obliged to do so we are, we are not obligated to do so to do research in relation to such matters is also an example of kulufiddin the fifth type that Mufti Taqi Sahib mentions is to do nakir when it comes to mujtahad fee matters is to condemn matters where there is a legitimate difference of opinion among ulama to speak out against one side where there is a legitimate difference of opinion among the ulama is also an example of ghulufiddin is also an example of being excessive in our practice and observance of faith and the sixth and last example that Mufti Taqi Sahib gives is to not take into consideration the different levels of wrong. To not take into consideration the different levels of wrong and to deal with them accordingly. And to deal with them accordingly. And here, um, in finishing, um, Mufti Taqi Sahib explains that all these things require knowledge and require expertise, um, require mahara, require expertise. And therefore, this expertise, where can we get this expertise from? That is not everyone's job. Rather, there will be certain ulama that have that level of understanding and tabahur, have that level of knowledge, and therefore they are able to appreciate these complexities, these nuances, nuances and these subtleties. And as a result of that, they are able to deal with things accordingly. So to understand the different kinds of wrongs 
and to and to what approach to take in relation to such wrongs, this is not everyone's job. This is the job of those who have expertise. And therefore, what we should do, Mufti Taqi Sab says, is to benefit from the suhba, from the company of such people. That when we benefit from the company of such ulama, then what will happen is some of that expertise may rub off unto us as well. So suhba of the ulama who are muhaqiqeen, ulama who have um, deep knowledge and have expertise um, is of benefit to us in our practice of our deen and can <coughs> remove a lot of doubts, a lot of confusion that we may have in our minds um, in relation to such matters. So the suhba of the ulama who are muhaqiqeen, who are experts, is of utmost importance in order to understand these things adequately and therefore to deal with them in a way which is appropriate. So suhba is of utmost importance without which we, we can't gain guidance. Therefore, what we find in the Quran is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah At-Tawbah, Ya ayyuhal ladheena aamanu attaqullah wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen That all those who have believed, be conscious of Allah azza wa jal and be with those who are truthful, meaning benefit from the company of the pious benefit from the company of the pious because if we benefit from the company of the pious if we benefit from the company of those ulama who have expertise then what will happen is that it will ground you in your faith it will ground you in your faith and as a result of that our understanding of our faith will improve and therefore our practice will also improve inshallah so to connect ourselves with ulama who have expertise who have knowledge and who have tazkiyatun nafs who have worked on their cell, on their nafs, who have um, worked on the purification of their soul, um, is of utmost importance in the practice of our faith. And through that, we can gain much insight into our faith and our practice, inshallah. So on that note, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, grant us the tawfiq to act upon what has been said. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those that abstain from gulufi din, that abstain from being excessive in the practice of our religion, and in our understanding of our religion. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those um, who adopt yusr and ease that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us. Ameen ya rabbil alameen wa akhwi da'wan. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Subhanallah bihamdihi subhanakullah bihamdihi kum nashidu wa la ilaha illa anta nastakfirkan tu'bu ilayhi.